You want to win a drone? Answer me this riddle. How much tech could a Tech Linux tech if a Tech Linux could Tech Linux? <laughs> no, no. As you guys know, we've been using Wendell.tech for all the projects that we've shown off pretty much anywhere around Tech Syndicate and especially in the Tech Linux channel. Uh, we've got the upcoming mail server video. We've got all the other how to set up your own servers and how to do Sandstorm and all this kind of thing. Well, you can now sign up for your .tech domain for $4.99 using the coupon code Tech Tech Linux. Now, there's more details in the description. .tech domains is turning one on the 5th of August, 2016. And to celebrate this, uh, we are going to give you a contest basically uh, from the dot tech squad so if you if you picked up a dot tech domain or you're going to go pick up a dot tech domain and you want to win a parrot ar drone parrot ar drone 2.0 i think uh, there's details in the description you can enter your domain that you set up as long as you're hosting a website the dot tech squad is basically going to pick out a domain name a website um, that you've set up at your .tech domain, and then you can win this Parrot AR drone. So if you want to find out more details about that, see the description below. So go out there and get your .tech domain for $4.99 at techlinux.get.tech, and build that killer website, and you stand a chance to win a Parrot AR drone. All right, so we're gonna level with you guys. I need to walk you through setting up a mail server, but if you've never waded into this and you haven't really done this before. You may have kind of a foggy understanding of what you need to do. So this this video has taken me a little bit, as you guys have probably noticed, because there hasn't been a video in a while. I've been working on it. The system that I wanted to show you the setup for is called Collab. Collab is very good. I've been using it for years, but lately the Collab company, I guess, has gone through a rebrand, at least since the last time that I did this from scratch. I've got my own mirror servers and I'm using, I think, an older version of Collab. But Collab is a lot like Microsoft Exchange or Gmail or other systems. And it's really misleading to say, oh, I'm going to set up an email server because even Microsoft Exchange, where it's one product, is actually a suite of a whole bunch of different things that are running under the hood. And so I found this really good article on Ars Technica that I want you to take a look at. We're not going to do this. Like, don't follow this step by step. Just read it, you know, from end to end and sort of understand it because it, it goes into the pieces of a mail server and so like with the Linode setup that we did in the previous videos if you didn't see that check the link in the description there's links to the previous videos there are other videos on this channel that are part of the series your sandstorm setup your sandstorm setup is hosted on Linode if you follow that or you know the hosting provider of your choice but it's on an uh, Ubuntu uh, Ubuntu whatever uh, operating system underneath and so underneath that we're gonna install postfix which is a, a mail client. And so at a very, very basic level, uh, in order to receive mail on the internet, you have to set up a server in DNS, your domain name, your .tech domain name. You create an A record that points to the IP address of your Linode machine. And then on your MX record, you specify the A record that you just created. So, you know, if it's uh, mail.wendel.tech and it's gonna point to the same IP as www.wendel.tech, then I would create an MX entry that is for mail.wendel.tech. Now I could create an MX entry that, that points to www.wendel.tech, but I'm trying to at least be a little bit organized, not super OCD about this, but just trying to be a little bit organized, the naming conventions, and maybe I want to run the mail on a different server someday. Maybe my ISP lets me get email on a residential connection, because in some parts of the world, that's a totally okay thing to do. Now, the, the caution that I will tell you before you embark on this is that if you are running a mail server on the internet, you have to have at least a modicum of responsibility because if you don't update the operating system and you don't maintain the server because you have a server that's on the open internet and is doing stuff, it is not nearly as hardened as Sandstorm is against attack. And so you have to make sure that the operating system is up to date. You have to monitor the logs. You have to really make sure that nobody is attacking and abusing your system because the people could get in there and wreck everything and you wouldn't even know unless they're really, really abusing the system. Usually by the time you notice that somebody is there, uh, it's already too late and that's very bad. So, you know, bear that in mind you're, that you're sort of embarking on a journey here. And it's, it's worse if you're going to run this on like a residential connection because then the mail server is open to the internet and if your mail server is compromised, then whoever compromised your mail server will have access to your internal network. And that's, that's just... That's just definitely not a, not a good thing. Uh, you definitely don't want people poking around your internal network because you never know. It's like, oh, all my stuff's secure except for that printer from 1985. So Postfix is sort of the first piece of the equation and Postfix is sort of part of the collab suite. Now, if you look at something like Microsoft Exchange, by contrast, there's a whole bunch of moving pieces there. There's the service that runs on port 25. Port 25 is the standard mail port. Uh, if your ISP blocks that, then inbound mail is not gonna work there. 
SMTP is an old protocol too. You have to keep that in mind that when uh, email was invented, it was not encrypted and it was a plain text protocol that just sort of ran over the internet. And so it's like, oh, we'll connect on port 25. Well, in order to maintain backward compatibility with old systems, but provide forward compatibility for new systems, there are ports involved other than port 25 for inbound email. Um, and then there's also encryption. So like TLS encryption, where two servers will do a handshake in plain text, and then they'll establish an encrypted tunnel over port 25. And then they'll exchange messages and do all that kind of thing also over port 25. But this is just depositing messages at a server. So this is like receiving messages on a server. The server is then holding your email messages. You need a way to pick them up. And so really Exchange is an assembly of a whole bunch of programs, even SMTP. I mean, really when you get down to it, the parts that do the encryption and the parts that run on the other ports, those are whole assemblages of other programs. And then there's the protocol for picking up mail on an external device, a device like a phone or a laptop computer or a desktop computer. Those have changed over the years. You know, uh, POP3 is a protocol for picking up mail, post office protocol. It's ancient, don't ever use it. IMAP is another protocol for picking up mail. It's not terrible. It's also been cobbled together and upgraded and updated over the years. It, it's okay. It's not ideal, but it is okay. And then there's Exchange Active Sync, which is actually supported by a whole bunch of things. Microsoft came up with this standard to make it easy for a server to do all of the work for a mobile device because in the beginning mobile devices really didn't have a lot of horsepower and those crazy you know corporate executives with 40 gigabyte mailboxes uh should not be having 40 gigabytes of mail on their phone it wasn't even a possibility i mean especially in the, in the first generation and so exchange active sync is a protocol that runs over um, web services meaning that services running on an encrypted https type connection um, but is available, there are implementations of it that are available. And so Collab is a suite of programs that, that if set up correctly, will provide a nice web interface, Exchange Active Sync for mobile devices, IMAP and POP3 services, which are supported by the underlying open source components that actually run that. And of course the open source, uh, you know, post fix in this case. Now in terms of antivirus and anti-spam and gray listing and all this kind of stuff, this is not really a collab problem to solve. You sort of get the whole universe of post fix stuff to do that. And so this can be a little bit of a contrast. This can be a little bit off-putting. If you have any experience with Microsoft Exchange or Office 365 or other products like that, you know, it's just sort of one program. You just install it and you, when you install Exchange, it installs all of this stuff and then you can, you can do this. And the components of Exchange are not really available individually with the possible exception of SQL Server, although the version of SQL server that's running is the exchange backend doesn't really matter and so in trying to condense all this into a 20 minute video I find that I struggle to even get it down to where I can just talk about all this in 20 minutes and so your homework for this is to go and read the Ars Technica article and to go and read about collab and to go and read about postfix the email program and email in general now there's another component to this because of the whole spam situation in dns you have special dns records txt records that specify the ip addresses that are allowed to send mail for your domain what this means is if you were to take your linode and set it up like as if it were microsoft.com or you know whatever and you wanted to send email as bill g at microsoft.com without DNS, without some other mechanism, you could totally do that. Nothing would stop you from doing that because the recipient mail server doesn't have any way of checking to see if the sending mail server is actually a legit mail server for Microsoft.com. And so you get into a situation where you need DNS to kind of solve the problem. So the recipient's mail server can say, hey, Microsoft.com, because we know what that is, which servers, which IP addresses, which machines are allowed to send mail on behalf of Microsoft.com? And the imposter's mail server will not be in that list. And so the recipient's mail server can reject it right there. And that's really good from an anti-spam and an anti-spoofing. The bad news is that this mechanism has not yet been rolled out across the entire internet. I mean, the, the standard was proposed and implemented quite some time ago, but it is still possible to set up a mail server that does not provide this record. If you are going to undertake setting up your own mail server, you really need to dot all these I's and cross all these T's in order to do this. And so that's why you have to be a little bit read into this. You're going to have to do a little bit of homework 
Uh, some of this I can probably put in a written article, maybe. Maybe I can get some volunteers from the audience. Things have changed a little bit with Collab. And so what I want you to do is if you're going to embark on this and you're going to do this in a virtual machine, I want you to post on the forums at techsyndicate.com your step-by-step -step to do this. The other great thing with PostFix, especially the anti-spam stuff, is what's your anti-spam recipe? Me, personally, um, I've got my own custom gray list and I've got a Perl script uh, that I've sort of put together over the years that helps me do a little bit of mail filtering. But I'm curious what your setup is. You know, do you use external services? Do you use any of the, the real-time blacklists in your PostFix setup? If you use PostFix for your mail server and you're just watching this just cause and you already know what I'm talking about, then share with the forum and I will probably include it in the video. And this can turn into a really great resource for doing this kind of thing, just cause we're gonna use collab at the very upper echelon you know if getting your email through the command line through ssh you know with mutt or pine or something is all you really need uh then that's fine you can just stop at set at the setup steps for those components if you want to go all the way and have a you know an exchange compatible email server that is under your direct control with tls encryption and let's encrypt and the whole nine yards then by all means you can totally do that there are some articles in the description that will give you more information on this general ecosystem start with the ars technica article and then let's go from there and let me know how you're doing with your homework in the forum at techsyndicate.com. Sorry this is taking so long. I, I thought I could distill this down into 20 minutes, like maybe two, three 20 minute videos, but it's been a lot of work to try to distill this down into something that makes logical sense, but that somebody that is experienced enough to install the Linux operating system could actually set up their mail server. So let me know. Until then, I'm going to be waiting patiently on the forum for you guys to complete your homework. And in the meantime, we may do a uh, command line, you know, like another another Vim tutorial or another like bash hacks or something like that, if you guys would be interested in that. So just let me know. Oh, and the RX 480. I've also been banging my head against compiling kernel 4.7, 4.8, getting the RX 480 working on Linux. I thought that would be a really quick and easy video. It turned out the answer is no. I was only able to get the RX 480 to work on completely stock Ubuntu, uh, but I'll explain all that later. If you have any questions and you just can't wait, just message me on the forum. Wendell, signing out. I'll see you later.